5.5 takes everything that you learned about in terms of trig functions and applies them to situations such as riding a Ferris wheel. So my goal in this tutorial is just to break down that Ferris wheel question. Hopefully you'll understand it a little bit better at the end. Okay, so let's just get right down to it. Normally, people think that the axes should be in this position, where your origin is right at the middle of uh, the Ferris wheel, and you have your X and your Y axes. This isn't really realistic because if you think about it, Y should represent the height. And then all of these numbers would be negative height. So that's not really logical. Instead, what would be more logical is if we had the X axis down here at ground level. So your height would be zero. Then you'd have your Y axis like normal. Okay, and that would mean that your origin is all the way down here instead. All right. Now, looking at the components above, I'm just going to go into them a little bit further. Your amplitude is the same as your radius. So the radius of the wheel, starting from the center all the way to the edge, that's the radius. In other words, your amplitude. Since this guy says 20, that means that this radius is 20, just like it would be to get to there. Now, if you think about it, the sine graph, if you had an amplitude of 20, you'd be going from a max of 20 to a min of negative 20. But that's not where negative 20 is supposed to be. This negative 20 is floating in the middle of a positive y-axis, so that's kind of weird. What's happened? Well, it looks like it's been shifted up vertically, and that's where we get into our next um, point. The vertical shift is affected by the center of the Ferris wheel. Okay, and I'm going to drive that point home just a little bit further by telling you, well, if you were a person and you were loading from the ground, you would first have to walk up some stairs, so your vertical shift, and then get into the cart in order to then start riding um, that Ferris wheel. Okay, so just that idea of having to go up a little bit um, has to do with a component of your vertical shift. All right, now the phase shift is your loading location. Previously, when we were talking about a unit circle, our standard position, or where the terminal arm would lie, is right here. Okay, and then it would start rotating counterclockwise, or I suppose it could also rotate clockwise. Um, but if we had our standard position, as in the starting point right here, that wouldn't really make sense. I mean, who loads onto a Ferris wheel in the middle of the air. No one. Okay, so the standard, or sorry, the standard position, I guess, or the, um, the terminal arm is actually, in this case, right down here. That would make more logical sense because you would load near the ground. Okay, so this uh, movement, either in a negative direction or a positive direction, that would be your phase shift. Lastly, we have the angular velocity, and that has to do with your rotation speed. Okay, so they'll tell you in the question how fast it takes for the person to ride all the way around, and um, that's going to affect, obviously, the period because it's a 360-degree turn divided by whatever your K value is, um, in this case, 24. Okay, so we've talked a lot about the overall understanding of the Ferris wheel questions. Let's just get right into a question. All right, so we have a Ferris wheel at the town fair, and it's 30 meters tall. It makes one rotation every 40 seconds, and the Ferris wheel's loading um, platform is two meters above the ground. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a very simple picture first. So there's a wheel, and then maybe we have a loading um, platform that's about two meters tall. And since you know that the diameter is 30, I'm just going to split that into... 15 and 15. So this is just a rough diagram. And you know that you're going to get on and it's going to take 40 seconds to spin all the way around. The amplitude. So like we had said before, the radius, which is 15 meters, is also the amplitude. All right, so that was simple enough. B, determine the max and min heights of the rider above the ground. So it looks like the maximum 
if they were all the way, say, up here, they're going to be 2 and then the 15 and then another 15 meters off the ground. So 15, 15, and then that additional 2, which is 32 meters off the ground. Your minimum when you're in the car, though, is going to be 2 meters off the ground. And I'm just going to do a really quick check um, that our amplitude is right. Okay, so if I take the amplitude, uh, sorry, there's a P in there. I would take the max, which is 32, minus the min, which is 2, and then split it in half. And that is 15 meters, so just wanted to do a quick check and make sure that our answer was correct. All right, now what we're going to do is we're just going to talk about the period of the ride. Okay, so the period we know is 40 seconds. So it's going to take us 40 seconds to go all the way around the Ferris wheel. But what does that have to do with our k value then? You know that the period is equal to 360 degrees over k. So if 40 seconds is our period, I'm just going to solve for k really quickly. Cross multiply, so that's 40 seconds times k equals 360 degrees, and then we're going to divide by 40, and we're going to get k equals to 9 degrees per second. All right, so I just want you to understand that this is your rotation speed. So for every second that goes by, you're going to rotate about 9 degrees. Then we're going to keep going. And these are, by the way, all these small components make up your equation. So that's the next part. We want an equation, and they specifically ask you for the sine function, all right, that models this ride. We already found our amplitude, and that was 15. We just found our k value and that was 9. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to try and figure out a vertical shift. Now that letter was, I believe, C represented the vertical shift. And remember that we could always figure that out by taking the max minus the amplitude. So that was 32 minus your amplitude of 15, which is 17. And I want to go back for a second so that you understand what I was talking about. This is from the center of that Ferris wheel all the way down to the ground, that's your 17. So that's what I meant before by the center of the Ferris wheel. Okay, and then going back here. All right, the phase shift. All right, this one's a little bit more tricky to understand. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw that Ferris wheel again. you know that it's going to take 40 seconds to go all the way around. If I break it down into quarters, that means it's going to be 10 seconds per quarter. All right. If you had started from standard position, you would then have to go 30 seconds positive to get to where the loading, like a realistic loading position would be, or you can go backwards negative 10 degrees in order to get to the same position. Okay, so your phase shift is 30 seconds, okay, or negative 10 seconds. All right, let's put those all together into an equation. So y equals your a value first, 15. We said we were dealing with sine. OK, you got your k value and then your phase shift. So let's just say it's the 30 seconds. OK, so um, we'll do x. All right, and then plus 30 seconds. And then we also have a vertical shift of 17. So we're going to do that. Or you have your other one where you had the 
10 seconds, but it was a negative. So you're just going to do the exact same thing. Sign 9. Minus 10. And then plus 17. So you really have two different choices in terms of equation. All right, the very last question. Sketch a graph. Okay, with respect to the time and height. So in this case, I've drawn the Ferris wheel and I want you to think about it. If you first loaded here, you would be at a minimum of two. So you'd be two meters off the ground. And that's when the clock starts. Then after 10 seconds, you're going to be up here, which is about 17 meters off the ground. So 10 seconds, 17 is maybe right there. Then another 10 seconds goes by, and you're now all the way at the top. Okay, so that was, I think we said 30, 32, which is all the way up here. Then another 10 seconds goes by, and we're going to be at 17 again. And lastly, the last 10 seconds to go all the way around again, so 40 seconds, which we said at the beginning was our entire, um, our entire, entire rotation um, speed is going to be back at 2. So we go up and then down. Okay, and an arrow to show that we keep going. And then we should write down our equation. I'm just going to replace the x and y's with h's and t's. Sine 9x plus 30. Sorry, I said I would make it a t, didn't I? plus 17. Or you could always do the other one. Sine 9 t minus 10 plus 17. And there you go. That is the Ferris wheel question.